afternoon. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm starting a little bit early, so uh, those of you that are here, thank you for uh, allowing the change that we have. Uh, after that introduction, I don't know that I would stay necessarily for my talk. Uh, it's rather wordy and rather scientific, but I expect that what I am going to show you uh, with the experience that we've had with stem cells, not only in cardiac disease, but in many other diseases, will reaffirm your understanding of what uh, the power of stem cells really is and why it's extremely important for us to embrace this new technology. Uh, you've seen uh, the initial slide there. Let's see. We'll go to the next one. This is a uh, sunrise over the island of Santorini in the Aegean, a Greek island, absolutely spectacular, and uh, it signifies the dawning of a new era. It sounds a little cheesy, but hopefully by the time I get done with my presentation, you'll understand why we're calling it the dawning of a, a new era. When I lectured medical schools um, and the medical students participate in the presentation, they are so eager to uh, take on this type of treatment process that it most likely will be the way we will be treating patients in the future, not only for anti-aging, but more specifically also for degenerative uh, diseases that up until now we haven't had a, an ability to treat. So turning adult stem cells into medicine, a little bit more exciting than the six-month follow-up of cardiomyopathy patients with uh, da, 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 da. I can't even remember what it is. And uh, I'm on staff at Nova Southeastern down in South Florida. We collaborate with the University of Miami. And our purpose has been to develop and bring to practice novel stem cell treatments. So we're actually treating patients. We've been treating patients for about four years. We've been treating uh, both critically ill patients as well as patients that uh, are not critically ill with just amazing results. Uh, stem cells, we're using them for the regeneration of tissues and organs, repair of defective cell types, and also uh, delivery of genetic therapies and chemotherapeutic agents into the desired tissues. So you'll see a little bit of this, or actually a lot of this, as we go on through the slide presentation. <clears throat> Talk a little bit about the origins of stem cells. Uh, the basic features of stem cells is that they are able to self-renew, and they can differentiate into effector cells, meaning the target organ of what it is that we want to be treating. Uh, embryonic stem cells are extremely advantageous in the fact that they're pluripotent. Unfortunately, up until this point, we have not been able to successfully treat any, not only human patient with uh, embryonic cells, we have not even been able to treat successfully animals without uh, it, developing some serious side effects, whether it be cancer or overproduction of whatever it is that we put the stem cells in. So embryonics are still a few years away, uh, probably many, many years away. And after I've shown you what we can do with circulating stem cells that we all have, or cord cells, I think you might be leaving this lecture maybe uh, believing that there may not be a place for embryonic cells in, uh, in today's or tomorrow's medicine. And obviously there's the ethical issues too. Cord cells, uh, a lot of patients have been, uh, or um, ladies who deliver babies, have been saving their uh, baby's cord cells for future use. They've been saving it uh, in case the child develops some blood dyscrasia or cancer, and they can use those stem cells to treat the child's uh, cancer. Uh, recently, a child was treated for, I believe, a cerebral palsy with good results on those stem cells from the cord blood. However, I think that generations will come when we are all saving our stem cells from when we're born, and we'll be able to treat, use those stem cells then to treat our strokes, our heart attacks, our diabetes, uh, in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on. So let's talk a little bit about the cord cells. Multipotent, you can do autologous or allogenic. However, uh, tissue typing or tissue matching is required because once these cord cells go ahead and differentiate into that organ, the uh, recipient will see them as foreign and destroy them. And there's still limited availability. We don't have, a, we don't have large uh, blood banks of stem cells where we can tissue type and be able to match those patients. Hopefully it'll become, or it'll come to the point, just like donating blood, we'll have enough donors out there with stem cells that will be able to match somebody. But uh, cord cells are extremely effective, but they have to be uh, used in patients that you've matched them. Otherwise, again, if you look at most of the results in patients that have been treated with uh, cord cells, if they're not tissue typed, uh, after about three months they dissipate and you have very little benefit after that time period. However, in typed cord blood, 
You can have long-term effects. And remember, we've been using uh, cord stem cells for bone marrow uh, regeneration in patients uh, that have suffered cancer, and uh, they've been treated many, many years. And then we also have the adult progenitor cells, which are the stem cells that we have in our bone marrow and in most of our tissues. Uh, you're familiar with bone marrow transplant or bone marrow extraction in patients with cancer. It's extracted from the uh, stem cells are extracted from the bone marrow. There's two general types, the hematopoietic or CD34s, and then the mesenchymal cells, which are more stromal-like cells. Stem cells are also present in our other tissues, including fat. We've been taking out uh, mesenchymal type stem cells from fat and using those in orthopedic type procedures, as well as other procedures as well. There's a lot of university uh, research right now looking at developing these stem cells into blood vessels, um, muscle, nerve cells, et cetera. 